Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Hope everybody had a great trading day yesterday as we are leading into Tuesday. Market is up a little bit this morning after yesterday's uh, pullback that we got. Uh, turned out that it was a uh, pretty decent down day as we saw some movement in uh, the major equities markets and as well as a little bit in the commodities markets. But I don't feel like it was too much of an overreaction. Uh, before we get into that, if you're new to the channel, do me a favor, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. And remember, if you are interested in learning more about what we do at TradersArmy.com, you have only three days left to get your first month for $20.20 as we are kicking off 2020 the right way. Uh, come out, see what you like about uh, Traders Army, $20.20 uh, to kick off 2020 for your first month. So give it a go. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. So the ES... Uh, as I'm looking this morning at its uh, at its level, we're up about 10 points. We were up a heck of a lot more than 10 points uh, in the uh, in the session as the market rallied hard up into the supply level that we identified yesterday. So yesterday we were looking on a 15 minute chart at at uh, at this supply level here, which started at the uh, which started around the European Open for a potential reversal. The market came into that zone. Uh, and then this is an example of how kind of kind of the right way to use the six candle rule. We came into the level, and then uh, one, two, three, four, five. After the sixth candle, the market really had gone nowhere. So at that point, you're supposed to take your stop, move it to break even. Now I don't anticipate most traders were awake, uh, but if you happen to be, you know, not in the U.S., then this was a phenomenal opportunity to take your stop and move it. And if you were in bed and you didn't move your stop. It was a very small level. You've uh, you've now certainly moved it uh, because you've gotten about a uh, three to one move out of that zone. So that trade worked out very effect effectively uh, off that little move away on a 15 minute chart. So what does that mean for today? Well, taking a look at just a potential breakdown, I think we have a potential breakdown below this area here, uh, as that's levels we've hit a couple of times. And then this demand here seems to be uh, not a phenomenal demand level, bad time of day that it was formed to retest off this area in here. So I think we could still break down and get another leg down and move from there. We're looking at the NASDAQ. So yesterday in the NQ, we, we did actually have, right after our daily market commentary, we hit our 15 minute level got a uh, right here, got a nice little move away from that zone, retested it a second time and got a little move away. The third time didn't really move away all that much. So then no surprise that it broke the next time through. Now, uh, it that came to the same level as the S&P and we got a reversal. So that NASDAQ trade was a nice little setup. I will say the NASDAQ this morning up uh, about half a percent. The s and is up less than half a percent. So the NASDAQ a little bit stronger this morning. Uh, so if you're looking for a short, the NASDAQ is not the one to do. The S&P would probably make a bit more sense at this, uh, at this juncture. When I'm looking at longs, I still have, if I go down on a four-hour chart, you know, we don't have any longs until a bit lower. So I think that, you know, could be a good setup. So looking at this in the NQ, this is kind of the setup and the structure that I like as far as this shape. You And you hear me talk a lot about this as far as a shape. This, this uh, when you have a move down followed by a move back up. Now, I typically would like it to go a bit higher on the retracement, but that usually sets up for another leg down. And I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a leg down look something like this. Don't know that that's what's for certain going to happen, but that's a very common price pattern movement. And that's a four-hour chart. Well, looking at that on a daily chart, if we uh, were to get that kind of a movement, we would see that it's not going to be uh, an overly aggressive move. And a, a pullback into there would would really... You know, that wouldn't be an overly aggressive pullback and would actually put us back onto a daily area of demand. And even if I go a little bit bigger and look at it on a weekly, that a pullback into that range would keep us, you know, and in, instill a kind of a weekly upward trend. So just keep that in mind. If we do get an, a, a slightly deeper pullback, it's not, it's not the end of the world. Matter of fact, it's probably a fairly healthy pullback to give us an opportunity to get long again. So, um, 
I'm going to, you know, certainly if you're trading as a, on a smaller time frame, then you're going to have a lot of opportunities inside of there. But I want you at least to consider that. Looking at crude oil. So here looking at crude, we took a look at this level yesterday as a potential breakdown area. Put an alert there uh, in case we do get a bit of a breakdown as it's just really been chopping sideways in the overnight session. So that one I'll just kind of leave in place. No real changes from yesterday. Uh, and then gold, we were looking yesterday in gold as it was kind of pinching along sideways. Uh, we were thinking about a potential triangle pattern as it got one, two, three, four touches. We never really did get the fifth touch uh, before then breaking out of that out of that triangle pattern. So this one didn't turn into a triangle because you, you, you got to get five to seven touches for a true triangle pattern. So now we're just kind of waiting on price to make its next move. Um, lower lower highs are telling us that there's, that there's a bit of selling pressure coming in, uh, but there is some supply up above us as well as a little bit of demand down below. When I move over to our bonds and currency markets, um, in the ZN, we've, uh, we've rallied back up into our little level of supply. Now the downside of this supply level, we've hit the confirmation entry. So we do have a potential for an entry out of this level, but our, our opposing fair price value area is right here. So that level is really suspect at this point because of the basing in front of the level. I would need a better uh, a better pullback for me to be most interested in it. Matter of fact, it's set up for a decent little breakout. Um, so I don't know that I love this on a uh, on a pullback. I like it better on a pullback. I don't know that I love the short any longer uh, based on the basing in front of the level. So if you're not in it, I don't. I wouldn't be jumping in it at this point. Uh, the Aussie is continuing its move down and uh, extending that move down. We had a little bit of a triangle breakout, which set up for a reversal of price returns into this area. Now, as I can see that we have, uh, you know, the we've broken kind of the next leg down. Um, looking at this on a four-hour you don't really have any demand for a little bit, but we're coming into that level uh, on the hourly chart. If I throw my momentum on there, and I always take a look at momentum, um, we will see that we are gaining a bit of momentum in through here as we're we're rising in, in momentum, but still lowering in price, which oftentimes starts kind of the formation of a little bit of a base. And so let's see if that if that happens. I don't have any quality supply levels above me. For, uh, to lean on at the moment for a short. Uh, this is probably the best one, but it's not a phenomenal level. And so I'm going to hold off really on identifying a supply level in here for a reversal, partially because of that momentum shift that we're seeing. Now, if we come back up to here, then you're going to have a better opportunity. The euro, so we were looking at the euro yesterday. Um, we didn't have uh, any strong breakout opportunities in the euro uh, identified this level yesterday while we were while we were trading, but it didn't give us that true breakdown. Um, you know, we could still see a breakdown at some point below here with this sideways price action, but it's not a phenomenal one, especially so, since I don't have a lot of room to roam having this level below me. Now, this four-hour level is actually a pretty good little level, so you know, I think that there is still a little bit of profit to be had if you want to take the breakdown below that area. Canadian dollar, we got a breakout level identified above this uh, this this seventy five eight ninety three area uh, in the Canadian dollar, but we didn't get any uh, any full breakout above it to make it worthwhile. So we're still holding off on this one, uh, as this one still is a potential for later today, because uh, our momentum is kind of shifting on the Canadian dollar as well. So in our currencies, not a whole lot to look at when it comes to the currency markets uh, when it as far as uh, overall opportunities not a whole lot is uh, is jumping out as tradable uh, tradable opportunities um, you know in in any of them we're looking at here at a potential reversal uh, right in there with a target up here at the green and did not come back into this area as of yet so that one's still still very valid although uh, not gotten to it as of yet I would need price to drop a bit further into that into that zone and then the Japanese yen we're staying away from our levels so Currencies are a snooze fest today, and most of our activity is happening in our equity markets as well as our commodities. But if you have any questions, please, as always, send us an email, support at tradersarmy.com. We have our uh, uh, daily market commentary will be out again tomorrow. If you have any questions between now and then, let us know. I will talk to you soon. See you.